Yeah, I, um, I'm teaching uh, in, in several levels. I'm teaching at the starting level uh, in the first course uh, doing marketing principles. It's a very basic course uh, talking about clear the key concepts of marketing. And then uh, in second and third uh, course I'm teaching uh, marketing management, more strategic vision of the marketing and uh, product and brand management is a more specific and then uh, in the for me one, one of the most interesting uh, classes is the marketing simulations where we apply the, the marketing strategy in a simulation and that is very very um, interesting how the, the the students learn year by year to apply these this, uh, this, uh, uh, concepts and ideas. Well, business students these days need to know about the role of marketing in the organization. So what role marketing plays in a business. Um, they need to know then about the operational and strategic levels of marketing. And most importantly today, the, digi the digital aspects of marketing. And they're the key components of any marketing course these days. The more specific things they need to know about, I think uh, the importance of the customer, and how the customer is at the center of everything um, in a marketing process. And the customer experience has to be optimized at all times. They need to know about the importance of brands, which are representations of their organizations and their identity. And that, that control over the brand now has moved to the customer, whereas before it was in the hands of the, the company who controlled all the messages. Now with social media and technology that's all changing and the customer really determines how brands are communicated between them at a kind of a peer-to-peer customer-to-customer level. I think they're two, they're, they're two crucial things. Um, other things are connected to how marketing is actually done. So how strategies are developed, how strategies are formulated, how they're then implemented in the organization and that that is the responsibility not just of marketing departments but of the whole organization. So the whole organization should think like marketers think. I think they're crucial aspects. Uh, well, uh, as, I, as you know, we discuss a lot of, uh, about this. Uh, marketing is a, a way of thinking, it's a ph philosophy. Uh, very easy to learn, uh, but very, diffi di very difficult to apply. You need to practice a lot and a lot these, these ideas, these, these marketing concepts, uh, to, to use it properly. Uh, this is what, what we are doing. We are uh, trying to teach the, these concepts uh, at the beginning and practice and practice and practice uh, these uh, concepts during several courses, uh, in my courses and uh, in, uh, also in another uh, marketing courses. I think they, they have to know the ideas, the concepts, and also to apply them. This is key. Marketing has to be a combination of theory and practice. So you can teach students concepts which uh, they can read about and they can find information about themselves you know, these days. There's a lot of information out there about the key concepts of marketing. Um, what really adds value to their experience is when they can put it into practice. So they can actually look at real life examples, case studies, um, but then actually have contact with real companies that are doing marketing. Um, and work with those companies, maybe develop marketing plans, actions with them, and then get feedback from those companies about how good their ideas are or their, their proposals are to those companies so that it's, it's real. As, make it as real as possible, I think, is the most important thing now for, for students. It shouldn't just be theory. It's got to be about practice. From, from my, my, uh, my opinion, it's, uh, the, the, the four Ps are uh, the, the old marketing is, is, is gone. Today we are thinking more on a strategic. This is why we are uh, spending time uh, and courses teaching strategy, strategy, because the added value in the companies comes from the, the, the good strategy, because everybody can apply this strategy uh, on more operational, tactical basis. The idea, the, 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 the difference be, uh, comes from the, the, a good strategy. And this is, for me, the, the, the main difference today from the, from the past. Yeah, we use different combination of uh, methodologies on the program. So students are in class and they'll be working with a professor who will provide them with you know, explanations or interpretations of concepts and ideas. 
And then they'll have to work on exercises, scenarios, developed examples, maybe case studies, where they can work in teams and share ideas and experiences and perceptions of those, um, those examples. And then we try to incorporate as much as possible technology into the classroom. So we get the students to do their own research online, for example, about a certain topic, an issue, a case, and share that information. But we also use techniques such as simulation. So we've got a subject which is called marketing simulation, where the students, for one semester, basically play a game, a marketing game. And they have to, in teams, um, they have a product, each team has a product, and then through this game, which happens online, they simulate a real marketplace. So they have to take decisions um, about the management of that product, about if they, for example, invest in market research, and the return that investment provides on for their product. If their sales increase, their position goes up, they, they win, and they, they beat the competition, the other teams that are, are participating in that simulation. We think that's a very effective way of teaching the students because students these days, they like technology. They, they, a lot of them play games themselves, obviously video games and so on. It's a medium they can relate to. And it's a very effective way to communicate the, the concepts, but also the real decisions and how decisions which you take as a marketer have real impacts on the revenues that your company generates, the costs that that company has, and therefore the financial performance of that company, their stock price perhaps, and the overall financial success of that company. Well, uh, the, the future will be, now we are thinking on groups, segments, uh, and the future will be thinking on consumers to offer uh, a real, real, real uh, unique experience to the consumer uh, on, uh, on, an, on a just-in-time uh, and, and, and everywhere. And this will be the, the, the most important challenge. Uh, not to think on group of consumers, think on consumer by consumers. Technology will help us to do this. I don't know when, but one day we, we will do, we will be able to do this. Digitalization and technology have totally transformed marketing. So the, we're now in a fully online era. We have some of our most important uh, consumers now, customers are digital natives, so they've grown up with the internet and uh, don't understand the world without the internet or without cell phones. Um, that means that marketing has to change and respond to those changing consumers and their, and their tendencies. Um, now we're in a world where information is instant. Everyone wants immediate answers to their questions. They want to buy stuff, and the moment they want to buy it, they don't want to wait. Um, they want all of the information that are available to them so they can compare and contrast between different products. They want to share experiences connected to products um, and learn about what other people um, experience when they bought that product or had that experience with that company. Um, this, this huge amount of information now which is available to consumers has shifted the power, I think, from marketers and, and companies to, to customers. So the power is in mu much more in the hands of the customers these days. So marketers have to work with their customers. Um, they're not targets anymore. They're collaborators. They're almost formed part of the company in this sense. So you design products with them. Um, you then work with them to distribute those products. Um, you, you talk to them constantly to find out if they're satisfied or not with their experiences. And you modify continuously what you're doing. If not, your, your business is at high risk. Because if you ignore your customer these days, there's an immediate substitution in almost all areas. These are some of the most important things I think that are changing. Well, uh, I'm mixing uh, the theory and the practice. Uh, I'm using uh, a lot of uh, examples, but uh, I also try to uh, not to use the, the classical examples. I, I'm talking about Coca-Cola, I'm talking about Apple. It's, it's obvious, but everybody knows Coca-Cola and Apple. I try to, to talk about small companies, uh, small companies from Spain, from other countries, companies that I, I know, or companies that I read. Uh, I read uh, or, or know people that works in uh, because these real companies that are today uh, doing business with success are the companies that uh, 
we are more interesting for the students because they can project it easily in this kind of companies. So how are consumers changing? Consumers are changing all the time, and they've always changed all the time. There's no, that's not different. Maybe the speed of change is important um, now. Um, customers, I think, consumers uh, want instant um, consumption opportunities. So they want to buy stuff when they want to buy it, where they want to buy it. Um, those customers want to share experiences. So the, the, the marketing is much more social than it used to be and interactive in that sense. Um, and there's higher expectation levels, I think, of customers. The customers expect to be delighted by products and services now. And if they're not, they also expect um, to complain about that or give you a bad review and share that with other people. Um, so this gives them much more, of, uh, much more protagonism in the whole process of, of, of producing and consuming products. Um, I think also consumers these days are looking for experiences rather than just a product. So it's about producing a whole complete experience around that product from the, 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 the phase where you're looking to or thinking to buy a product, doing the market, your market research about that product, then actually buying it and the service you receive when you're in the, in the purchase situation, maybe in a store or online, and then afterwards when you've bought it. And then you go back and repeat that process as a loyal customer. That's the full experience now, which customers are looking for. And they look for quality and excellence and to be delighted at all points. Well, if you compare the students with you and me, uh, the students today are more technologically, are, are, are in the, uh, born in the technological era, era. We are technological adopters and they are technological borners and, and means uh, the technology for them is quite easy. It's part of their, li their lives. Sometimes we have to, I have to tell them, well, stop it and, and let's uh, go to the basics and then let's use the technology. Because if not, they are going directly to the, uh, te to the technology because it's what they know. They are in the era of play and, uh, play and error. And before to play, uh, uh, to an error in business means money, means uh, uh, losing resources. And uh, the idea is to uh, build the students that knows, uh, has a, a huge, uh, a solid, a solid basis in order to implement, to work in, in a business using the resources that they have. Uh, yeah, in our sports management program, we have a sports marketing subject. Um, and in that subject, we look at an industry-specific um, scenario. So how does marketing happen in the world of sports? Um, which is different, similar in many ways to other industries, but also but different. So we look at the strategic relationships between the key players in the industry, so between like the organizations that produce sports, clubs, um, franchises, um, the big events that we, we, we watch on TV. Then we look at the relationship with, uh, the, the, with TV and uh, with media in general, so how that relationship works in terms of mutual promotion and how money is exchanged there between um, teams and uh, and media organizations for, for media rights. And then we look at the commercial relationship that exists there um, between sponsors, merchandisers, and so on, and, um, and sports organizations. Uh, there we see how money is generated through marketing processes, through media on the one side, through media rights, and through commercial um, uh, commercialization processes with sponsors and so on from the other side. Um, this is a very dynamic process, and in sports, it's very visual. It's an entertainment-based industry, so it forms part of the entertainment industry in itself. So the customers there are different too. They're fans, um, which is a different relationship often than with a typical consumer of a typical product, unless it's something like Apple, you know, who have fans as customers. Now, and all companies really want fans as customers. So sports are in a kind of a privileged position. But they also have to understand the different ways in which fans behave. You know, fans don't always want to be seen as customers or, or consumers. Uh, they have a, more of a deeper cultural, social connection with, with sports. 
which goes beyond the typical consumer experience. So you, we, we, we help students understand that the importance of understanding these, um, these fans and these consumers.